All right, Louisiana Tech and UTEP. Wow, we've got UTEP one-point home favorites, 52-and-a-half the total in this game. I'm on Louisiana Tech here, Connor, and I'm, and this is not me singing the praises and giving everybody here watching the show a ringing endorsement of Louisiana Tech. Okay, this team hasn't been any great shakes either this oh, season yeah. uh, with the way they've played. They, that's been a very disappointing Louisiana Tech team. Two and three is being kind, you know, with what we've seen here so far from Louisiana Tech. All that being said, I know they put up, they did put up a battle on the road against Nebraska. And we know Nebraska is still trying to work their way back into prominence. It wasn't pretty. There was a delay due to lightning uh, during that game. They lost 28-14, but, you know, they lost outright as favorites against North Texas and gave up 40 points uh, in that game. They gave up 38 points to SMU. Certainly their defense has not been very good uh, for the most part, this uh, Louisiana Tech team. That being said, UTEP is horrendous, man. They're they're, they're the, wor- the the worst of the two evils, in my opinion, uh, in this game. Uh, what what is happening with UTEP is an utter disgrace, considering what they've got in terms of returning talent. You know, they've got um, so much back on the defensive side of the ball from last year. It's supposed to be a really good defense. I haven't seen it. UNLV goes up and down the field and trucks them uh, last week uh, on the road in El Paso. Uh, up, they could not stop UNLV worth a damn. Forty-five, twenty-eight, and this offense, man. All I read and heard, and I bought into it. A lot of people did, though. All the starters on the O line back. Gavin Artisan, a third, fourth year starting quarterback. Deion Hankins, running back's been there forever. The great receivers they've got, including the guy that almost transferred out, Tyron Smith, staying on with UTEP. This was supposed to be a loaded offense. Supposed to be terrific and ability to move the football. Well, yeah, they scored twenty-eight. Uh, against UNLV, that's their high water mark. Uh, but a lot of that was in garbage time when they were trailing. When UNLV was playing that passive defense, they only scored ten against Arizona, seven against Northwestern, uh, and then fourteen uh, against Jacksonville State in their very first game as an FBS program. Uh, one and four ATS this season uh, for UTEP. Uh, and when you look at both of these teams, and look, Bachmeyer has just driven me uh, in, uh, bonkers this year with just his. Uh, erratic play thankfully last week uh, they gave Jack Turner uh, a chance at quarterback and I thought actually I have I have to say he looked up better than what I had seen from Bachmeyer to be quite honest with you I mean it got to the point I think where uh, with Bachmeyer uh, all the struggles and look I know he's been uh, banged up uh, and that's the reason uh, why he didn't play against Nebraska Um, but man even if that shoulder injury heals for him and, and he's available for this game against UTEP I'd stick with Turner. I'm telling you, Bachmeyer has not done a thing for me going back to his days at Boise State as a quarterback. He has not done anything for me and say, wow, this is a big time quarterback at the college level. I have not once, not once thought that of Hank Bachmeyer. And then Jack Turner comes in last week and, you know, decent performance, I thought. Better. Uh, And remember, that's a that's a pretty good Nebraska defense. You know, don't forget how well they bottled up Colorado for a large part of that game before they got tired in the second half. I think Nebraska's actually got an improving defense. So for Turner to play like that on the road, I I was impressed with his play. I thought he was all solid, and I thought he was certainly better than what we had seen out of uh, Bachmeyer in the games before that. 27 of 42, 64% completions, that's solid to me on the road against a, a, pretty, do- a pretty good Nebraska defense. So, I'm hoping it's Turner. I'll really like Louisiana Tech in this game if it's Turner, uh, once again, a quarterback. And even if it's not, there's no way I'm getting the UTEP. There's just no way. That's not happening. It's Louisiana Tech or nothing for me. C-Mac, Louisiana Tech, UTEP. Yeah, I think you got to you gotta go with Turner real quick with La Tech. You just just leave Bachmeyer, you know, on the sidelines. But they hung around, you know, I mentioned on the road, Nebraska is not very good. And La Tech's defense isn't very good, period. But on the flip side, this UTEP team is awful. I don't know how we mentioned getting Bachmeyer out. How? Hardison is still the quarterback. He threw three picks that were horrible in yeah, that I UNLV. Know. He's That's awful. Yep. He's got to be benched. I, I, I don't know why they just keep, I guess, he's had the job for three years. They're just like, he'll keep it. And he keeps making horrible decisions. In, clutch moments the defense just got gashed you know UNLV has got a pretty good offense but they just went up and down on them I know they're desperate for a first win but nothing's changed in this UTEP team right now at least that I want to back him especially with Hardison at quarterback I just know he's going to make a huge mistake so I it's law tech or just don't play because I don't know when here 
UTEP's going to win a game or look different or look better on both sides of the football. So I agree. Play yeah. Turner. Yeah, You're play Turner. Up. Yeah, come on here. Uh, you know exactly. Uh, let's get the let's make the right decision here and, and let's get uh, Jack Turner back at quarterback on the road against, like I said, a pretty solid Nebraska defense. I thought he showed you something here. So let's go, Sonny Cumbie. Don't be a, don't be an idiot now. Don't be Josh McDaniels. Do the right thing uh, here.